Hey, what's going on guys? I'm back for another interview today. Today, it's not gonna be a player interview, it's a coach's interview. I'm interviewing one of the coaches down here in Florida at one of the JUCOs in the FCS AA at Miami-Dade State College. They're looking to turn it up this year. I'm talking about Coach DJ Jenkins. This guy has helped me out a lot with my career. He has a lot of knowledge of the game and he's gotten to learn from some great head coaches down here, coaching at some of the top schools in the country in the NJCAA. You talk about Eastern Florida State, Florida Southwestern. Now he's at Miami Day doing his thing. And the players that he's been able to coach, so many talented players, high major guys. Just He's got such a great experience already as such a young coach. And I can't wait to get him on here and ask some questions here in a sec. Hey, what's going on, Coach? What's up, man? Good to have you on here, man. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Always good to talk with you. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I said it uh, before you got on here. You've been able to coach at some great schools down here in Florida so far. I know you're repping Miami-Dade now over there ever since you left us at FSW. But now you're doing your thing, having a great season over there. Uh, talk to me about this journey that you've been on, because every coach has a starting point, has that origin story how did you really get into coaching to get to where you are now uh so I was, I'm a coach's kid so since I was young my dad coached basketball uh so growing up that's just all I knew I uh played for him in, in middle school and then in high school and then when I graduated high school I uh I had a couple opportunities to play soccer and basketball in college but uh I really just wanted to start coaching and right at that time one of the high schools in, in my city called my dad and asked uh, to, for him to start the uh, program there. So the stars just kind of aligned that that's, it was just meant to be. So right when I graduated high school, I just started coaching with him uh, at 18. And so my four years in college, I, I coached with him. And then my first year out of college, I coached with him. And then uh, so after those five years I, is when I decided, you know, I wanted to try this college thing. And uh, this will be year 11 coaching uh, already, which is kind of crazy. But uh, so that's kind of how it is. It's in my blood. That's all, that's all I've kind of ever known is what my dad did growing up. And I've just been around the game and in the gym since I can remember. Mm -hmm. Definitely great being able to, you know, learn from your dad. I'm sure he has a lot of great knowledge as well and being able to grow and develop like that. And especially, you know, past few years, You've been in the NJCAA coaching as an assistant coach. I said it before, you're Eastern Florida State, FSW, Miami-Dade. F down here in Florida, the JUCO is really – the Region 8, in my opinion, is probably the best region out of any of them. The level of competition, you talk about Chipola, Northwest Florida, all of them. I mean, you've gotten to coach and go against so many great players. Talk to me about your time down here in Florida at those three schools. What has that experience been like for you uh, over these past few years? Yeah, it, it's – man, and, and what's crazy is coming – where I came from in Iowa uh, was a Division II JUCO, and the, the year I went there, they were coming off a 36-1 and one, uh, season, won a national championship. And then my first year there, we went 29-8 and eight and got third at, at the national tournament, and that was Division II. And, you know, I always tell people that's the best D2 JUCO league in the country, the, the ICCAC. But then coming down here, man, it's a whole different level. Uh, you know, getting the opportunity to go to Eastern Florida with Coach Shulman, um, you know, all he's done is won uh, since he's been there. So being able to be with him and learn from him, he's had – he got runner-up at Hutch, uh, been to the national tournament a few times. So just coming to a program like that was, was a blessing. And then, you know, obviously being at FSW last year, uh, was was nothing short of, of amazing, too, because uh, in such a short time, what they've done with that program has been uh, amazing. Uh, you know, there's not really any other words. Uh, shout out Kente Hart. Um, but, you know, you got to – and then coming here what was a leap of faith. You know, Coach Fernandez, my head coach, was a Division One assistant of 24 years. He was in the ACC for nine, ten years, uh, worked for Leonard Hamilton, uh, you know, he's worked for guys and, and with guys that are, are high level. And uh, I've been close with him since I moved down to Florida. So the opportunity to come learn under him and be with, with someone like him was, was just absolutely something I couldn't pass up. It was hard to leave FSW. You know, those are my guys. And Coach Murphy's a great friend and mentor to me. Um, I still talk to him regularly. And obviously, Kente, 
uh, you know, that's my brother. We shared an office and uh, we talk every day, all day you know, about anything, life, whatever. So uh, the relationships I've built down here just outside of basketball, too, has been uh, what, what's been most enjoyable for me. Um, and then obviously you get you talk about on the court. I mean, I always tell guys and recruits, if you're playing down here, you're a high level player. Hey, there's there's no Joe Schmoes down here. Uh, and, and all of them are dogs. Again, when, when you look across the, the JUCO landscape and you see my head coach, George Fernandez, Steve DeMeo at, at Northwest Florida, and Greg Heyer last year, and then Donnie Tindall Chipola, and then Rick Cabrera at, at Tallahassee, those are four dudes that have been longtime Division One assistants or head coaches. So I, no other region can claim that, uh, I, that, I, that I'm aware of. So just every night out looking at, at guys like that, uh, that you have to coach against, and then just the players, man. I mean, you just go down the line, uh, guys that I've coached, and then uh, obviously all the ones we went up against. Yeah, you've gotten to coach some great talent. I mean, at Eastern Florida State, you had a couple of high majors on that team. I know Osai Osifo spent a few years at Florida. He's at Jacksonville now. A couple of guys that went on to Georgia. And then, of course, I, during your time at FSW, you talk about Cario Quendo, who's the main guy at Georgia now. I mean, he should have been all SEC last year. He'll get it this year. Terry Roberts, who did his thing at Bradley, the school that you went to for college. He was newcomer of the year. Now he's at Georgia, too. Of course, all those other great players that you've coached, a few at Miami Dade as well. When it comes to those guys that are high major talent, is there a difference that you see right away, you know, like Osai, Terry, Cario, all of them? Uh, is there, like, a difference between them and the other Division One players? You know, it's a good question. It's kind of hard. Uh, the, talking about Osai real quick, the the what people don't realize about him is is coming out of McKinney, Texas. Um, you know, obviously I wasn't there for his freshman year. Uh, I was there for his sophomore year, but he wasn't a, a very highly recruited guy. Coach Shulman um, ended up getting him really late because I think he saw him in Wichita somewhere, and, and he knew one of his guys and got him. Um, and after his freshman year, the only offer he had was from Winthrop, and. Coach Shulman was like, hey, man, you had nothing coming out of high school. You know, you probably should just take it. And Osai was like, no, nah, I'm going better than that. And that dude, I mean, his motor, his work ethic, his his mindset from the weight room to individuals to late night shooting to practice, it was relentless. And that's what separated him. Same with Mike Starks. Um, a lot of people didn't think Mike Starks was talented enough. And, and you know, everyone has their opinions. But same thing. I mean, you couldn't tell that guy no. I mean, he just did not take that for an answer no matter what it was. Uh, so I think that's a big thing is, like, the, the mindset and, and the motor and the tenacity and the will to do it. Uh, and then, you know, I don't, I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but Cario, not many dudes can just do what he does athletically, physically. I mean, that dude is just different. And he's just, he was just blessed with it. So there's different cases, I think, with different guys. Um, and then you got guys like Terry uh, that are have just put in the work and got better and got better. And every year they've gotten better. And then, you know, people didn't think he was high major. Look at him now. You know, so it's just it, I think it's case by case. But I think the biggest thing is the love of the game and the, and the willingness to get better. And just the you're never going to take no. You know, I'm just going to make it. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to outwork everybody because the ones that don't work they get passed up. So I think that's the, probably the biggest thing that I've seen. But again, it's, I think it's just kind of case by case with different guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you've definitely, like I said before, you got to coach a lot of them. I know at FSW that one year you guys sent. Shout out Kente Hart. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to Coach Hart, man. I know that one year that you were there, you got to coach five guys that went on to the division one level. You know, you talk about Terry and Carl, you had Jaden Campbell, who's one of the best scorers at Sanford now. C.J. Lane and Mohamed Sila, all of them went D1. And then a couple more um, the year after this past season, you talk about John, Rye, Cam, all of them. And now you're at, at Miami-Dade, of course, in the same conference. You guys play FSW three times each season. And I know when you were at FSW, you got to play Eastern Florida State, your old team. I'll never forget Coach Murph's speech before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we, we, all, we all need to yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll say not, that. <laughs> That was definitely a fun one for sure. But I know going against these old teams, you have, you know, these strategies, you know, some of their plays, you know about their players. What's that like 
coaching against your old teams? Um, it's, I don't the bittersweet's not the right term, but like, it's fun, but it, it's, you know, as competitors, you got to look down the, the sideline and see guys that you coach with, that you recruited, uh, that you, you know, obviously last year I had most of those guys, if not all of them. And, and even this year, you know, uh, uh, there'll be a couple on FSW and um, we don't play Eastern Florida, but there'll be a couple on FSW that I recruited or coached. So, I mean, it's tough. It, it's, I, I never try to let uh, the, the competitiveness ruin anything because at the end of the day, basketball is a game. And, you know, I would value the, the friendships and the relationships with these kids and, and coaches much past winning or losing. Obviously, you want to win because everyone wants to talk you know, talk trash. And, you know, I, I don't know who's on here, but I know some FSW dudes already talking to me. So, you know, it's, it's fun. It's, it's fun banter. Uh, I enjoy it. You know, it was, it, it was fun last year. Even we weren't very good. Uh, we, we got the job a week before school. So, you know, I just, what it is, what it, it is, what it is, but you know, this year will be a lot different. We'll be way more competitive. We got a lot of dudes. So it'll be more fun this year because we'll, I, I think every game will be fun and, and we'll be able to really go in and, compete against these guys and um it's but you know obviously i know most of what he seems going to do so <laughs> you, you got to think that i'll have a little bit of an advantage but these are good coaches they're not just going to keep doing the same thing that it, it, they know that i know what you know a, a play is or uh a defense is or a call so these coaches down here aren't, aren't stupid man these dudes are do this at a high level and they've been doing it for a while so uh, you know Murphy and Shulman, they they're great coaches, so they're gonna they're gonna do what they do, and if they gotta change something, they're gonna change it. But it's fun. I, I mean, I enjoy it, but again, it's more fun, competitive. It's it's I don't mind banter, but uh, I enjoy it, man. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've gotten to learn from you know those experienced coaches. You get to go against them, and this past season, you actually had an opportunity to be a head coach yourself. Actually, it was on my birthday. That was a freaking that was an awesome birthday present there for sure. <laughs> I know you, the head coach for you guys was out um, due to some illness, some stuff like that, and you actually had an opportunity to uh, be the head coach during that game. What was that experience like? You know, taking the reins and really leading these guys uh, towards a win. Well, there was a lot of stuff ironic uh, it, it, on top of it being your birthday. So, obviously, it was at the school that I used to coach at. Mm -hmm. It was in the city where my parents lived, so they were able to see. And the school we played, I went to school there for two years, ICC, because it's in my city. So, there was a lot of things that kind of happened that, like, it was really weird, uh, just kind of how it all came into place. Obviously, I, under the circumstances um, – I, I wouldn't want it. Uh, now, looking back, you know, my, my head coach is fine, but uh, obviously never one of the circumstances of your head coach being sick or anything wrong. But it, it was it was good that he trusted me enough to do it. Uh, you know, that was a big reason why I came here. I, I really felt and, and he told me, you know, I, I, I want you to, to take over. You know, I want I want you to be where I was someday. So he really Coach Fernandez lets me he lets me rock. He he puts a lot of trust in me and I'm, I'm grateful for it. Uh, and, and that just shows what type of guy he is. Uh, but it was fun. I mean, just being able to, it was different being able to be on the sidelines and, and walk up and down and uh, especially somewhere you coach uh, against, you know, coach Weisinger, the, the head coach of ICC, he actually, he was one of the schools that recruited me to play basketball. So I've known him for a while. So it was just kind of weird how it all worked out, but it was, it was fun. I got to do it for my parents got on the court that I used to coach at and we won. Um, and Kente Hart got to be there. So uh, anything I can do to make him proud, you know, it, it's a great day. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, the stars really aligned on that one for sure. And it was great being able to watch that. And that team, you know, you guys had some great talent. I know one of the guys went off to Morgan State and you guys are still bringing back some players, got a good recruiting class coming in. I know you have a good uh, point guard coming back from last year's team, Scoot, I believe his name is. Speedy, Speedy. For Speedy, that speedy, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, I know he's he's a he was really talented last season. I can't wait to see what he does this year. What are you guys really? I know you can't really give a whole lot away, but what are you guys really looking towards this season to really improve and you know have your players get ready for that Division One level? Uh, well, the first thing is is yeah, Cam says Trey Young. Yeah, you know Cam. Uh, but, you know, we returned – again, we got the job late last year. My head coach got it about a week or two before school started. So, it, it, I was able to get in Khalil, who's at Morgan State, uh, Speedy, 
and then and then one other kid, uh, James. So we were able to only get in three guys. Now, Demonte Brown was an excellent player for us. Um, he was going to go to D two, uh, ended up dropping down to NAI, but he's at um, Langston, who their new head coach just won a national championship at Talladega, so they're going to be good. But um, you know, in terms of this year. Uh, we bring Speedy back, and we bring Matt Corey back, uh, who was a good player for us last year. Um, great, great kid. Uh, can really shoot it. Uh, works his tail off. So, you know, we have two guys coming back that we feel that are, are good for, for uh, what we want to do. You know, we don't uh, – we're not going to sacrifice our locker room and character for talent. So, we, we, didn't, we didn't go out and just try to take the most talented guys we can. Uh, we wanted to really make sure they fit with what we want to do. Uh, so, we brought in 10 new guys uh, on, on full scholarship. We cleaned house and, and, and tried to bring in as, as best kids and talent as we could. We got two D1 transfers, um, one who was NEC freshman of the week one year, um, and then Mayum Mayum, who uh, was really highly recruited coming out of Potter's house, ended up having a couple of injuries out of LMU. Uh, but he's back healthy. I think he's going to have a big year. Um, and then we bring in a couple of JUCO transfers, one Deval Harrell, uh, was player of the year in his conference back-to-back -back years. So we were expecting a lot out of him. And then we have a lot of freshmen, man, that, that can really play. Um, you know, going down the lines, Michael Stillwell, uh, high-level player out of Elevation Prep on the grind session. Deshaun LeCue, uh, high-level player on the grind session. Uh, Dylan Edwards went to South Kent. Uh, again, high-level player. Um, shoot, who am I? Chuck Temple out of Bella Vista, grind session, high-level player. Um, so you just go down the line and look at Tyreek Weeks, who we just got. Uh, that was at Springfield Commonwealth. So you look down the line, I, I really feel – obviously our talent's upgraded. That, this is, you know, it's just a fact. Um, now, we had some last year. Um, I see Khalil just joined. You know, he was one of them, uh, first-team all-conference guy. So, uh, you know, there is a couple pieces that we lost. But I really feel one through 15, uh, top to bottom, is it, better. Um, you know, we, we – Brought in a good mix of, of transfers. You know, Elijah Horde, forgot about him, the Mexico Junior College transfer. Um, and then Ibrahim from, from Fairleigh Dickinson. So, um, you know, I really feel top to bottom uh, will be a lot better. Um, I think we'll play fast. Uh, we'll play a lot faster than we did last year because we got the guards to do it. We went very deep last year. Uh, and I think we're going to play a fun style of offense. You know, obviously not giving anything away. But I think with the personnel we got, we'll be able to do a lot of things. And really uh, do some different things offensively than what people uh, what people are used to, and it'll be different from last year. I'll just put it that way. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. I know, like I said before, Florida's got the best JUCOs in the country, in my opinion, and Miami Dade. I feel like is definitely going to be one of them this year, especially with you there as a coach and with the talent that you brought in. And I definitely can't wait to see you guys at FSW this year once again in conference. It's going to be a tough game. I cannot wait to see that for sure. Yeah, it'll be, it, it'll be fun, man. It's going to be, you know, obviously I'm not – I'm, I'm big on action, so you know, I'm not one to see and talk. It, it'll be a lot different last year, I think. I, I, you know, our is going to be – it'll be a hell of a team. I mean, that's how, again, top to bottom, they're probably more talented they've been in the last three years. So, uh, you know, Coach Murphy's got them rolling, um, and it, that'll be a good game. You know, obviously I, I don't – I tell my guys all the time, you know, I don't – I'm not looking ahead to FSW. You know, it's just because I was there doesn't mean that's the games I'm looking at. You, know, you got to look at November 1st. That's, that's all it is. And you just get better from then on because you can't look ahead to January and, and worry about FSW, Indian River, whoever. You guys just got game by game. So it'd be a good year. You know, we're looking forward to, to the the conference play. You know, there's a couple new faces in it. So um, it'll be fun, man. Yeah, obviously I'm looking forward to coming home to FSW and, and uh, seeing Jay Mitch. You know, he's a. Uh, I, I got something for Jay Mitch, so I don't know if he's on here, but yeah, I'll make sure he sees it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Jordan, Jordan's definitely ready for this season. Uh, yeah, I already know, man. I already know Jay Mitch, man. That's my guy. Oh yeah, he's having the. Oh, lot I forgot Steve. Steve. <laughs> Steve's uh, came to us from Chipola too, so don't forget Steve. <laughs> All right, I'm definitely looking. For, I'm definitely gonna have to remember these names for when you guys come in and when we go over to your place. All right, man. Thank you so much, Coach, for doing this interview with me. Great info, great stuff, man. And thank you so much for doing this with me. You've helped me out so much in my career so far over the past few years, and I can't wait to keep learning from you. No, I appreciate you, man. And, and all my guys on here, make sure you follow Slim Sports, Jay Slim, 
Uh, he's your man for the edits, whatever. That's my guy. So all my guys on here, make sure you follow him. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And I definitely hope to have some of them on for interviews too. Absolutely, man. Just let me know. I appreciate you, Jay. Have a good one. All right.